Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Nick Cage Fight Podcast. And as you can tell by the sound of my voice, I am not Josh. Oh, no, no, no. I am Rich because Josh, uh, we gave a day off because he got married. So he gets two weeks off. We only get one. I'm here with Ryan. How are you feeling, Ryan? I'm feeling like I wish it was still martini time. Yo, martini time uh, did whip ass. Yep. And today we are not reviewing a nick cage movie no we are reviewing josh's wedding we're reviewing life experiences yeah whether or not like you know would or would not do again but we'll we'll get through all of that not that i'm saying i want josh to get married again i'm not no, saying that but, like i'd relive that day i'd definitely eat more eat more i would definitely eat more and um I definitely would have tried more. I would have mixed more alcohol. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I would have tried like I would have given them like a one of everything. So uh, good luck advertisers with this one, I guess, because we're just going to be talking and we have no time frame. So also good luck listeners, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you'll know how long it is when you boot it up. Yeah, it'll either be like, oh, cool, this is only like 40 minutes, or fuck, what did they talk about for two hours? <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the case, but yeah, you I never know. Like I got a sneaking suspicion it's going to be a short one, a little uh, little mini cage. Yeah, a, a nice little mini cage just to, to really uh, get the palette going before we jump back in next week with... Color Out of Space. Color Out of Space. That's, Which I, I already I'm, I'm, watched... I'm just like, <laughs> I'm I'm just like space um canceled director. God, what is it? Lovecraft. The undescribable color is just magenta. Oh, I mean magenta. Look, look, magenta is like a hard color to pin down. Yeah, that's fair. I, I did end up watching that last night because I didn't uh, see the text where Josh said he wasn't going to be able to get his uh, synopsis finished in time for today. Yeah, I mean, I downloaded it. And just when it was finished downloading, I got the text with Josh being like, I'm not going to have time to finish this. And I'm like, that's absolutely fair. Ryan and I had already talked about uh, what we are going to do in case this happened. Yeah. And my other plan kind of fell through because I couldn't source a copy of the movie I wanted to talk about. Was that Calamari Wrestler? That was Calamari Wrestler. Yeah. Oh, man. I really, really wanted to watch that. That's okay. I think for the second episode, I'm going to um, release something from the Patreon vault, like from okay. one of the last year Halloween episodes. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, you know, nice, nice low effort shit. Hell yeah. Because I, if there's one thing I hate in this life, it's putting in effort. I know. Effort, it's just so much work. And work is effort. Yeah, it's, <laughs> listen, I'm just not about that life at the end of the day. So yeah, this was uh t- t- for people who don't know, Josh is a uh is a spooky boy and got married on uh the spookiest day of the spookiest month. Well, the spookiest day of this spookiest month this year. Yes, yes, yes. Because you don't always get a Friday the thirteenth in October, but when you do, you gotta capitalize. On you got to You you gotta do it. So I guess we'll go over. Um, let's go over like dress first. All right, because yeah. Ryan was wearing a nice snazzy suit. It, I, it was all fucking Goodwill thrifted over the course of like a two day Goodwill blitz. The same, except for the jacket that I wore. Uh, that was a which, phenomenal jacket. W- w- which was an Amazon find for like 40 bucks. It was like a crushed velvet looking. Uh, it looked very comfortable. It was very comfortable. It was warm enough that when I was outside chain smoking, I was not cold. Yeah. yeah. It, it got a little chilly out. I'll, I'll, I'll agree. Um I was wearing not so thick of a coat or a uh, jacket. Yeah, like, I mean, listen, I don't think I'm doxing anybody to say, like, you know, we're we're in New Jersey. New Jersey 100% has seasons. Yeah. It gets from, uh, it gets from oppressively hot to bone-chillingly cold very quickly. And in October, you can get both of those in the same day. Yeah, frequently. Today was a good example of that, actually. Yeah. All right, so uh, you, want, you want to say a little bit more about your outfit? You didn't mention your accessorizing, which I yes. appreciated. To to keep, I don't. I'm not going to keep it short, but uh, to really get a grip of what I was going for, uh, Jason Momoa in Fast Ten. If you all just want to go and uh, Google that shit, 
that's what I was going for. But I was wearing a like a purple crushed velvet suit or not suit suit jacket with a lighter color purple shirt underneath it black tuxedo pants which i got from the goodwill that i realized later on were uh given to goodwill from caesar's casino which means they're very stain resistant yes they are very stain resistant and they're also very hard to wrinkle yep yep a nice pair of black shoes and multiple multiple necklaces Yes, the necklaces is what I wanted you to shout out because they were phenomenal. As well as a pair of uh, purple cheetah print sunglasses. Absolutely perfect accessorization. Yeah, all of this, it was very fun. I very much enjoyed dressing like that. It was very loud. I was a bit nervous that... uh, Which is funny because I was nervous that I was too loud. And then I saw yours and I was like, okay, I'm good. He's good. We're good. Which is fun, and I'll you know what I'll I'll get to it when we get to it. But uh, there there is a funny point to this as well because I thought that I was going to be too loud, and like halfway there, I was like, "Oh God, is a bride going to think I'm like trying to show her up?" Uh, The answer is no. It's a wedding, correct? And and the answer was no. So that that was good. We get there, and like how it's set up is like kind of cool. You have like the public bar to the left the wedding venue to the right, which is like, you know, kind of just like a wedding hall. And then if you walk straight back, you have this river. One of the funnier antidotes was that one of the boats there had a big thing on the side that said a river daddy. It had like a puffer fish on it uh, from hearsay. We didn't actually see this boat because it was an eyesore and it needed to be removed from the (laughs) wedding's view. (laughs) Yeah, the the bride specifically said river daddy cannot be in my photos. River daddy got to go. Uh, so they got River Daddy out, but I really wish I saw this boat. It was like kind of a bigger, apparently it was kind of a bigger boat with a cartoon puffer fish that just said River Daddy. And if I saw River Daddy, I would have stole River Daddy. I would have at least had to take a picture. I would have at least had to take the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we put it, but it's going somewhere. I mean, you put it in water. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anywhere. Could be Earth anywhere. is, there, Earth is two thirds water. There's a lot of water, man. And I guess I'll I'll do a quick little rundown of my uh, my costume. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty simple uh, gray pinstripe suit uh, from toe to tip. Found a nice uh, maroon shirt with like white dots, very small, so a little understated there. And then I did a um, like a silver tie that had kind of a paisley pattern on it. And of course, I'm going to a wedding. I got to wear my Doc Martens. Yeah, and the tie was dope. I even said afterwards because you were just like, "Oh yeah, I I look at uh you know wedding suits as disposable. I wear yeah, them once I and then I get rid of them." And I'm exactly. just like, "Yo, I want that tie." I mean, I, you, I still got it. I'll give you that tie. Well, no, because you were like, "No, I'm keeping the tie." I'm like, "Good call," because that tie is dope. Yeah, I just don't know when else I'll wear that tie, so I might just end up giving you that tie. Nice, yeah, because that tie, I I do wear uh ties to work. Yeah, so we get there, and the first thing we do, of course, the open bar is not ready yet, but there was an open bar. I want to make that clear in case people are just like, why are they paying for drinks? We paid for one drink, don't worry. Ah, drink, yeah. We we stimulated the economy temporarily. Yeah, just, just for a quick minute, it was literally uh, two old fashions. They were pretty good. They were pretty good. They, they could make a hell of an old fashioned. I We opted for the uh, bullet rye, because I like that little extra spice in my old fashioned. Oh, absolutely. It was it was delicious. Not long after that, it was time for the ceremony. A lot of Blink-182 right. string covers. Lots of Blink-182 string covers. Uh, lots of string covers in general. Yeah. yeah. Uh, lots of acoustic emo. I was thinking, like, like, do I want to grade pieces of this wedding piece by piece and give everything a B plus just to see what <laughs> Josh would say? I think he'd get it, but, but I'm not I think gonna... that would be rude. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. Pre, pre-wedding A+, plus. I was in at the ceremony, continued with my drink, loved that, loved that for me. I mean, you gotta have a ceremony set. Yeah. The ceremony starts, one of our Patreons is, was in the wedding, which was dope. Not only was he in the wedding, he was not on the side I was expecting, which was very funny for me. Correct. We got to see an old friend of ours as well that I, I feel like one or two stories has to be told on this podcast 
about this man. Is it Lair Bear? Why? Yes. Okay. I yeah. was just trying to avoid naming him, but I mean I guess... that's not a name. That's that's <laughs> yeah. the name I call him. But also like Larry. How many Larrys are in the world? There's a lot of Larrys. Some like, of them wear leisure suits. Yeah, some of them are just trying to get laid in weird 1991 video games. Yeah. Yo, my uncle had one of those games. And oh, like yeah. me and my cousin would try to like sneak and watch it while we were like six years old or sneak and play it when we were like six years old. I had no idea it was going on except for like <laughs> <laughs> boobs. Yeah. And those were like bad t- graphical text adventure games. So it's mostly you just typing in commands and the game saying you can't do that. <laughs> no, this was actually a graphic one of the ones that actually oh, it had was the graphics. Book. Okay. So that must be like the third or fourth one. It's something like that, but it was. It, I remember it had graphics, and the and the computer was running like Windows. Like remember, like Windows three point one one. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it was running. So it had like graphical capabilities. But anyway, enough of Leisure Suit Larry. Back to <laughs> this wedding. This is now a Leisure Suit Larry podcast. I mean, we're gonna review. We probably don't die pretty soon. We we probably could do that because there's got to be at least 20 of those goddamn games i think it's like eight or nine but they're all pretty bad yeah but then we can like we can offshoot into like a bunch of like the weird atari porn games oh my god oh dude don't get me started on porn games Uh, we could make a podcast about that actually (laughs) or like or like remember there's like rumors in school i remember like there was a rumor in my school when i was a kid that there was like some code you can put into Mortal Kombat 2. And if you did it correctly, like Jade, it was no, it was like Molina, I think. It was like Jade or Molina or one of them. They go topless. They go topless. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember this. But then there was like also a fatality that could only be performed by Jax after you beat Molina, where like they have sex. Oh shit. I don't remember that one. <laughs> that was and like that was one that even like nine year old me was just like, okay, do it, show me, yeah, show me, show me, yeah. show me. Because like video we, game rumors were always the wildest shit. There was this one kid I went to fucking school with who lied about everything, and he said he, he had a nose. Was he made of wood? Was no he like Pinocchio. No, he was not Pinocchio. Okay, he would just lie about everything, and he lied about like this weird Sega controller that he had that had like. 22 buttons on it and that he could like put in this code to make like vega from street fighter like not have a mask on and give him like bison's moveset i'm like okay <laughs> sure so I, I remember one day i went over his house and he had forgotten about this lie and i hadn't yeah and we go to play street fighter i'm like okay yo go get this controller he's like what i'm like the controller with like 22 buttons oh it's uh it's it's in my room i don't want to go get it no, 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 go in your room. Go get it. No, I don't want to. Go. <laughs> it... Oh, God. I don't know where. Oh, Larry. Larry is where this happened. And we'll, yeah. we'll have to tell a couple Larry stories because my dude is wild. <laughs> Larry is wild. <laughs> uh, but the, the ceremony itself, you know, a couple things that I really liked. Number one, I could have a drink with me. Number two, is I, I love a short ceremony. Yeah, that was quick, breezy even. As somebody, no religious bullshit. As somebody who, when I got married, I got married in a fucking Catholic church. The thing took an hour and a half, 20 minutes in through my own wedding. I'm like, I'm bored. And we were all drunk. Oh, we were hammered. I'm like, I'm so bored. Why is there a mass in the middle of this wedding? Why do I have to take Eucharist? This is the worst thing ever. And the bride wore black as well, which was a very, very nice touch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, ceremony, like 10 out of 10, knocked it out of the part. All my favorite things was slowly getting drunk during it, super quick. Uh, Everyone was dressed uh, fancy. Yes. But weirdly, which I really enjoyed. Very appreciated for me. And a lot of people were talking about fucking anime during, or well, just before the ceremony. So I got to chime in and correct somebody. Oh, I do remember that. And I don't believe it's the only time you were talking about anime during this wedding. Probably not. I fucking love anime. (laughs) So after that, we get to go upstairs. And now we get to the real, the real reason. Like, this is what, this is when we decided to do this podcast. 
the hors d'oeuvres came out. Oh man, they were fucking good. Well, no, they start out with a beautiful charcuterie board. Yes. Just they, literally oh, everything I need on a charcuterie board they had there. Just 11 out of 10. Like, and you they, want like, they least, got prosciutto. The least amount of prosciutto that you could grab is the size of my fist. Yeah, it was a prosciutto flour. Yeah. You couldn't take like a couple of pieces. You had to take the whole flour. It'd be rude not to. Yeah, it it, it was wonderful. It was wonderfully, it was just, oh God, I want to I again. definitely had the meat dreams that night. Meat dreams, meat sweats, meat sweats. everything. Yep, yep. Fucking great fig jam. They had the uh, the cantaloupe so I could wrap the prosciutto around that. Oh, it was perfect. They had the sharp provolone. Oh, they yeah. Had, they had everything that was... There's a nice speaking. crystally like uh sharp cheese too that I don't I could not identify but was phenomenal. Well, you know who could identify it? Josh. But also the people who advertise on this weird podcast that we do about Nick Cage, but also Brigitte sometimes. There, there's gonna be an ad for a cheese identifier. God I need that I, information. If if these if these advertisers are listening close enough. Like, that is what we actually need. I need a cheese identifier. Yeah, I need a cheese sommelier. Uh, but anyway, here's an ad for BYU or something. Sure hope you like that ad for BYU brand dick pills. <laughs> but I really hope it was for a cheese identifier. Yeah, me too. Like, that would be... See, that's I'd buy two. Of, that's the kind of upstart business that we need in this world. Oh, we got to figure that out. Like, it can be a, a mobile app. Like, take a picture. It's like, this is Manchego. Oh, I fucking love a Manchego. Oh, yeah. But then after that, we get the hors d'oeuvres. And let me tell you, when the worst thing we ate was bacon-wrapped scallops. You know that was a good spread. Yeah, because it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. And Ryan and I are sitting there like... This is delicious, and it is the worst thing we've had. Which is wild to me. Uh, let's Why don't we just go down a list of, like, what they brought out on the little trays on toothpicks. Oh, so they, at first, they had the mini cheesesteaks, like the cheesesteak sliders. Itty bitty cheesesteaks yeah. with fries, yeah. That was fucking ridiculous. They had these little, it was like a mozzarella ball, a cherry tomato, and a piece of basil drizzled in uh in vinaigrette it was great. yeah it was like a like a tiny caprese salad yeah like a bite-sized caprese like we also said they had bacon ra- bacon wrapped scallops which were fucking they were tremendous bomb. they and were the still worst like thing we the had. worst thing we had but they were still phenomenal uh we we both missed the lamb chop which yeah is unfortunate. i'm a little bit miffed about that i think it must have been when i went to the bathroom or something because i saw some dudes with just a bone gnawing down i was like where's that at show me where it lives and i think there was one other thing that i'm missing there was the the cracker that had like the it was like a maybe a fontina or some kind of a soft cheese oh like, like a dollop of some kind of a jam on top yes and that was oh so fucking good that was delicious and the cocktails, they had two specialty cocktails, but then would also make you anything you goddamn wanted. Yeah, and the two uh, specialty cocktails I found very charming. Uh, they were both named after uh, Josh's dogs, Josh and uh, Kristen's dogs. Yes. So it's basically uh, one was a, like an alcoholic apple cider, classic, can't go wrong. And the other one was like a raspberry lemonade kind of thing. Yeah, which again, I you, that, that, I liked that one a little more than the cider personally. Yeah, uh, I I was chewing on the cider most of the night, but also for Ryan, it was martini time. It was such martini time. I think you had like four or five martinis. I had like five martinis. Yeah, it was and then like ten PBRs. <laughs> and we also had a shot of tequila, a big shot of tequila. Uh, that guy kept little... giving me shots of tequila. That was not the only one I had. Every time oh, I geez. went to sit down again and have a little drink of water, he would grab us another shot of tequila because he realized I could, you know, put a couple down. Yeah, I didn't even realize because like when when I took you home, you were not drunk. No, like uh, I would have trusted you to drive home. I would not have trusted me to drive home, but I definitely but you was, would have fooled me is what I'm I, saying. Yeah, I I guess I just I don't know. I had that uh, that wedding energy in me. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it kind of that that wore out like basically three minutes after I got home, three minutes after I got home. I'm like, I'm going to bed. Yeah, 
Oh, I ended up fucking going home and watching a bunch of a uh, spooky 60s soap opera about vampires. That is the least surprising thing I'm going to hear in this podcast. Yeah. So after the cocktail hour, uh, at this point, I think everybody's about three drinks in. We go inside and uh, and we go sit down. Open bar still. We're all drinking, chilling, having a grand old time. Some guy at our table is just like, okay, who does shots of tequila? I... I thought at first he was like just kind of like joshing with us a little bit, like just kind of like no, seeing what the table's down for. And he came to play. He came with ten tequilas for the table. Yeah, yeah. It, he, th- th- this man came to get drunk and chew bubble gum, and he's all out of bubble gum. The d- delightful man. His wife was lovely. Asked, asked a lot about our podcast. He really did. He seemed really interested. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully like, he's listening. Up, that Joe? would be dope as shit. That would be dope. Yeah, Joe. If uh, we get this guy Joe just randomly listening, yeah, and it was buffet style, love a buffet style. I had a one of everything, and we'll get into that soon because first, well, I had a one of everything for dinner. I did not have a one of everything on the dessert d- uh, buffet. I didn't either because at that I, point I had gorged myself on dinner. At that point, I was like, I'll have a cannoli and a black coffee. Thank you very much. So the bride and groom come out literally three seconds before they come out. I turn to my partner and I'm just like, yo, they're going to like the, the first answer is you in January, like 100 percent. And then, bam, called that shit. Yep. Called that shit so called hard. Shot. And, you know, we get all of the normal wedding stuff. We get the mother, son, the father, daughter, all very, very nice speeches. Again, one speech was done by a Patreon listener of ours. The speeches were Whose very, hair very was good. Phenomenal, by the way. Yes, yes. Well, he has hair longer than mine, which is hard yeah. to do. Great hair, great, great tuxes and everything. Like, let's talk about the tuxes real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because Josh's tux on the uh, the inners of it, it was all lined with like skulls and stuff. Yes, that that was a real cool little touch. He was rocking the uh, the Chuck Taylors that also had skulls on them. No, they were Vans. Were they Vans? I thought it was Chucks. Okay. They were Vans. And on the back, it said Till Death. Yep. Yep. Because the the bride at some point changed into the same shoes. Oh, I didn't catch that. I think I only caught it at the after party. Mm-hmm. But I'm not one. I, I know I caught it at some point or my partner caught it. Somebody caught it and let me know. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Sick. Then we get to the buffet, and oh my god. Yo, that flounder franchise, oof. oof. The flounder franchise was great. The chicken, again, was the worst thing, and it was But it phenomenal. was still phenomenal. I would be absolutely glowing with pride if I served that chicken at, like, my table. Yeah. They had the, what, was that a London broil, do you remember? Uh, Prime rib. Prime rib. Prime rib, yeah. Prime rib was... Prime rib with really good au jus. I was a little disappointed they didn't have horseradish, but not everybody's a food pervert like me. I would have loved some horseradish. A little horseradish with a nice prime rib is like one of life's greatest pleasures. Fucking the 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 best Caesar salad I've ever eaten yes, in my life. I was really surprised how good that Caesar is because I usually consider Caesar to be a really straight down the middle salad, but that one was like perfectly balanced in all forms. So gorge ourselves. And I just want to talk about like some of these interactions that we had with people. I think my favorite one was actually uh, someone we had spoken about earlier, uh, Larry, who um, I am going to preface this by saying um, Larry enjoys his drugs. He enjoys his psychedelics. Larry's a wild man. We love Larry here. He is a wild card. Absolutely phenomenal person. We're all outside smoking a cigarette, and Larry comes and sits down and pulls out just this gigantic uh, Ziploc bag and slams it on the table. And I say out loud, Larry, did you bring a bunch of shrooms to this wedding? And he's like, no, it's just rolling tobacco. Damn it. It was pretty good rolling tobacco. I didn't recognize that brand, but I might have to uh, hunt that down for my own purposes. I mean, it might be from that country that he lives in. No, he said he bought it when he was stateside, so it's got to okay. be somewhere. Yeah, that's something I'm not going to say. I'll just say that uh, Larry lives uh, his Elsewhere. summer times in Central America. I'll give it that, because that way you kind of get this, like, 
kind of this vibe, I guess. Because, like, uh, that's a vibe. Vibe of a gentleman man about town. Yeah, like, living in Central America is a vibe, I feel. Like, that's a different, like, you can't just say he lives out of town because it's like, you know, that could be anything. That could be, yeah. like, living in, that could be living in England. And, like, like that's a completely different vibe. I'll put it this way. He offered to have me over his house when he's back there to smoke Scorpion. I hope you bring some back. I hope you're able to. Yeah, some Scorpion. Because I want to know what, what it that's like. like. Yeah, I'm also really curious. And I don't know if I can get down to Central America anytime soon. We were just talking about, he was just like, yeah, just come over. I got him in the basement. Where it's like, you have what? He's like, just a bunch of scorpions. We have a, a scorpion a bro- room. He specifically called it a brood of scorpions. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> I, I I like to imagine it's like... Uh, like like living in Jersey, every room that you are in has a spider somewhere yeah. in it that you're just cool with. You're just like, listen, you're going to stay in your corner. I'm going to get the rest of the room. You're going to eat your bugs and we're going to coexist. One of the most heartbreaking things I've ever heard was recently finding out that most house spiders cannot survive outside. So if you bring a spider outside because it's, you know, getting a little close to you, you're just killing that spider. It's functionally the same as smushing them. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, Aww. I didn't know that until very recently. I don't like total, that. Total bummer. I don't like that for me. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I kind of imagined that this was like. Was like he's just like cohabitating with a brood of scorpions. Like you guys get the basement, I get the upstairs, and everything's cool. I was very excited that they had amaretto too. Oh, I didn't even notice that they did. That's all awesome. because I I get to uh, get to have my coffee. Shit, I'm not an amaretto sour if I knew that. I I did not get to ask for a Di Sereno on the rocks that <laughs> Yeah, because you're correct. And that's the wrong thing to do. I should have gotten it for the bit though. Yeah, that would have I should have just I should have just gotten it and then like gone up to Josh and be like, oh, what you drinking? Di Sereno on the rocks. Because <laughs> we're fancy in this nightclub. Dude, you're not like 60 yet. You can't be a 60 year old Italian man drinking Di Sirota until you're a 60 year old Italian man. I thought 60 year old Italian men moved to cognac. Do they move to cognac? Really? Well, my 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 ex's grandfather, like Jesus Christ, this man, I'd go over to his house and he'd get me hammered on cognac at 11 in the morning. Mm. Yeah, my grandpa was always a uh, a port drinker, but that was only like after dinner. We'll be like, I, I'd go over, he's just, he'd be like, oh, Rich, do you, a, a thick Italian accent, like straight from fucking Sicily. Uh, do you want some cognac? And I'm like, I'm polite. I'm like, yeah, sure. And also I like cognac. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. And pours two shots. He drinks them. And before I even am done putting the glass down, he is pouring two more shots. And I'm like, I can't say no. And after like six shots, I'm like, I drove here. <laughs> Like, sir, yes, I'm gonna sleep cannot, here. <laughs> sir, you cannot give me any more cognac. I will die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what I think old Italian men drink. I think. Yeah. I know old wasps are really into the dry uh, gin martinis. I can see that. Don't know what that says about me as an Italian man. <laughs> Drinking dry martinis. Drinking dry martinis with one olive, yeah. See, I normally hate olives, but you can give me a dirty, dirty martini. Yeah, dirty martinis are nice. I, I prefer the dry with the one olive because it gives it just that little bit of a uh, bit or you know saltiness that I like in there. Yeah, yeah, I got you. We'll talk about this playlist too. I thought the playlist had a bunch of bangers. Uh, it was like you know if you go to a go to your local bar on an emo night, and that's what it was basically. Yeah, essentially. Um, not a whole lot of like straight wedding songs, I would say. Which I appreciated because I can't stand most of that shit. But it was cool. It was a, de- definitely like a cool playlist. Yeah, a little bit of funk for dancing, which I don't do, but I enjoy other people dancing. So yeah, I enjoy watching people dance. I'm not a big dancer myself. Yeah, talking to one of the other uh, dudes. Well, a lot of people I recognized from the old comic shop, but one of them I was talking about, uh, yeah, neither he nor I are dancers. So right there with you, Tim. Right. And I think a lot of people probably knew that like, they're like, okay, this is not going to be like a dancing wedding. This is going to be 
more of like a, people will be outside smoking. There's going to be a lot of eating. wedding. Yeah. Yes. That's where I got my most like social interactions, especially that one girl who said that she was in a black metal band who kept echoing me. I don't know if you caught her. She was Yes. Oh, well. I, I did. I think she was, I think she did the, um, the hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, she, she kept making fun of me and I was like, all right, I'm into this. <laughs> Yeah, it's really hitting your kink button. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 like, like a, I like a mean lady. <laughs> I like to be told what to do. Especially if that mean lady accuses me of being into math metal and gent. Wait, what's wrong with what's wrong with gent? Nothing's wrong I with find it gent, hilarious. But like it is very funny, but it's really funny that that's like what she pinned me down as a fan of on my one offhanded comment that the band playing at the public bar had kind of a sloppy bassist. <laughs> <laughs> That whole, that was just a sloppy band. It was a sloppy band, yeah. Yo, we get to the desserts, though. Oh, good cannolis. Good fucking cannoli. Good, like, there was, like, these lemon cookies, too, that were oh, I didn't get very lemon bomb. Cookies. But good fucking cannolis. Good fucking cannolis. Proud as an Italian man. Absolutely. Coffee wasn't bad. It wasn't anything to write home about, but it nah, did its coffee job. wasn't bad. It, it, it did its job. I put some amaretto in it. Called that shit a day. Uh, put a little bit of cool. I almost had everything to make my weird mixture, but they didn't have any peppermint schnapps. Ah, uh, well, I don't know I, if they had it. I w- was not going to ask. It's this, nah, it's fair. it's October. Like peppermint schnapps, I feel like is a uniquely Christmas drink, or a you're, you're Ryan at twenty two and drink a whole bottle and then can never look at peppermint schnapps again. Okay, yeah, I I get that because schnapps will fuck your shit up i had to eat an entire loaf of bread just to survive that night <laughs> that sounds it that was sounds correct yeah especially in a tree house <laughs> <laughs> especially as somebody who would go drinking with you when you were 22 years old so yeah. oh good times and that is why i didn't seem that drunk at the wedding <laughs> yeah yeah but like the whole wet like it moved fast it was very alcohol filled very it was nice seeing people from my past that i haven't seen in 10 years absolutely apparently a group of us we all tried to get like an old friend to well i'll I'll say it doesn't name it doesn't matter we all tried to like get preston to come yeah yeah but and he's, like he's disappeared off the face of the earth well here's the thing i was not confident that my phone number for him was any good right so I'm like, okay, I'm going to Facebook message this man. Now, I don't know if his, like, he's kind of a strange dude, you know? Yeah, so are we. So, God, when did I? I messaged him last year. Preston, you need to come to Josh's wedding. I need your address. It's an emergency. I'm being held captive until I know this information. <laughs> um, He saw that message two months later and never responded. That that tracks with my uh, experience with the P since the comic <laughs> shop closed. Yeah, he doesn't have time. He has no time for any of us. No, no, he's he's raising some kids. He's like, uh, you know, he's living his life. Yeah, he's doing it. He's doing the thing. He's doing the damn thing. So that was a bit of a disappointment. So obviously, B plus wedding. No, no Preston. No, <laughs> no, no Preston. Preston. Yeah, no, yeah. no Preston. B if plus Preston wedding. Preston was there. I would have actually gotten drunk. I know that much. <laughs> You know who was at my wedding? Preston. 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 I remember getting really drunk at your wedding. Yeah, because Preston was there. Preston was there. <laughs> and that Preston was... a bad influence in the best possible way. I mean, look, that 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 was a B-plus wedding for an F-minus relationship, so... Yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was... We didn't make it nine months. Good job, me. Really, really good at this wedding thing. I'm good Great. at going to them. I'm positive I will be bad at having one if I ever get to that point. <laughs> yeah, but then, like, you know, I sort of winded down. We get to the, we go back to the first bar, the one that's literally right across the way. Have a little I, after keep, party. I keep getting hounded by townies on whether or not I'm getting laid tonight. I don't Wait, know if you caught that. There was a I couple d- of townies who kept, I kept running into them in the bathroom and they were like, you getting laid tonight? And I was like, I guess, maybe, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably you not. Probably. You don't want to disappoint the townies. Yeah, you got to tell them, like, oh, yeah, look at this. But in reality, it's like, no, I'm just going to go home and, like, watch weird cartoons and fall asleep. Yeah, that was my plan. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, no, the, the the townies were very, very funny. I got looks by a lot of them because we were kind of in like, it was like a backwoods kind of bar. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of a one, like one color hoodies is what I'll call them. Like a lot of dudes just wearing jeans and like a black hoodie. Uh, the car the hat. mafia. Yeah, and, and a hat of some sort. Yeah. But, I mean, that was a good time too. It did, things got like, weird but i feel like most like most end of night parties yeah like yeah. things tend to always like get dramatic i know there was some drama going on i don't know what it was nor do i give a shit i didn't catch any drama and i don't care to oh yeah but that's just kind of like end of night like drunkenness i think right yeah totally it's it's the the beginning of the hangover yeah yeah that's kind of like when that shit happens yeah, Ryan, you say ad break too, but I think we're basically done here. I think we might be basically done here. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Although it would be very funny to be like, hey, ad break here's... into <laughs> ad outro. break into so as a matter of fact, we're doing that. Here's some ads. And we're back to say, uh, hey, thanks. Thanks for listening to this podcast about Josh's wedding because we had literally nothing else to talk about. Yep. Uh, But like I said, I'm going to release a uh, Halloween episode from last year that we recorded for the Patreon. It'll probably be the Shadow of the Vampire one. That's a good one. I I Uh, liked doing that episode a lot. Which is, uh, for people who don't know, was a movie. Nick Cage is not in it. Uh, However, he did produce it, which is why it is on the Nick Cage adjacent list. Also, Willem Dafoe is there. And John Malkovich. And Carrie Elvis? Yeah, there's... Listen, that movie was real good. And Udo Kier is also there. Yeah, no, that movie rules. It's great. Yeah, that movie was very, very good. I definitely... used to be a mainstay on Comcast's uh, free DVR program thing, where they'd have a bunch of movies you could watch, and that movie was always on there. It was like that... I remember Revenge of the Nerds was always on there, too. Yeah, yeah. But that was also like a... uh... And a bunch of Skinamax shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, the days before internet porn were really wild. Absolutely. The wild west of nudity. Like, you're just... Like, like you're just trying to find anything. Like, th- this is the era you're, you're of... pausing Jerry Maguire for that one single frame that has tits. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is that era of, like, you know, 14-year-olds taking the uh, Victoria's Secret catalog. Yes, absolutely. Completely lawless. Yeah, people don't know about that anymore. <laughs> or, like, people reading weird uh, sex stories on the internet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Basically penthouse forum, but on an actual forum. Yes. And, like, it wasn't even good. It was, like, four pages long of just, like... And then I came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet you did, bud. <laughs> bet you did. Like, yo, this chick was real hot. I did her doggy style, and then I came all over. Her, and that's the end of the story. Okay, bye. <laughs> Yeah. And you're just like, oh yeah, this story's getting That's me there. raunchy. <laughs> what a raunchy thing! <laughs> oh what's, my what's god, that Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com/slash Nick Cage fight. Give me a dollar, and I'll give, give us twelve dollars a year. Give us give twelve dollars a year. Give us a dollar a month, and I'll give you some like really weird sex story like that. Yeah, we will end every episode with a weird sex story if you pay us a dollar. Oh man, that would be sick. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Uh, we also have a uh, X, Twitter. I don't know that website. That's yeah, fucking twitter.com slash un- slash cage fight underscore pod. Yeah, and uh, well, I mean, you know, once they pay us, once they make us pay a dollar a month, it, we're not going to be using that anymore. No, it's, so it, don't, that's don't a dying, worry about uh, that. a dying form at this point. <laughs> yeah, like don't don't you worry about that. It's you can follow us if you want, but once that becomes a dollar, like we out yeah uh we have a facebook for uncles as well uh just nick cage nick cage fight podcast uh look us up there uh that's probably the most consistent thing i have actually it's probably the facebook yeah that seems to get the most eyes on it which is funny to me well because we get the uncles who think that we are nick cage yeah yeah 
which is very funny. And I love interacting with them. And I'm just like, yeah, I am Nick Cage. Um, you should check out my Patreon and give me a dollar and like listen to these three weird nerds talk about my movies. Thank you. Once again, I am Nick Cage. Podcast sponsored by Nick Cage. That'd be so dope. That would be really dope. <laughs> To be like, yo, we got the Nick Cage sponsorship on the Nick Cage Fight Podcast. Nick Cage, why haven't you sponsored us yet? Yeah. Don't you love us? Don't you love us, Daddy? Papa. Papa, give us money, Papa. <laughs> That's all we... There there actually is a tier on the Patreon uh, for Nick Cage only. It is a one of one. It is $500 a month. And it does not get you anything. I mean, it, I'm assuming it gets you the lower tier Patreon stuff. No, 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 no. Oh, you get it you gets nothing? you nothing. <laughs> if you you don't need anything. You're Nick Cage. All right. Yeah, that was my rationale. Was uh was like, no, 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 you're Nick Cage. Like, you don't actually need anything. Like, you're good. You're just saying, like, yo, what's up? I found you. Strong. And I'm Nick Cage. I can afford 500 bucks a month. I hope he can afford 500 bucks a month. I'm sure he can. I think he's past his tax troubles. Yeah, I mean we're we're in we're in the fourth age of Cage, I believe. So yeah, the Cage of Souls. Yes, yeah, he, he he's got it. We're we're good, but yeah, that is our uh, Josh's wedding review episode. Hope uh, you liked it. A AKA we didn't know what to do, so this is what we did. Yep, <laughs> had to fill in the uh, time slot somehow. I can't wait to lose so many listeners after this. Like, man. This is jumping the shark. <laughs> this is their arm in Tanzarian. Yeah, but don't they know that we appreciate them? We do appreciate them. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye.